Steve Sarkeesian was recently hired to replace Tom Herman as the head coach for the University of Texas. It seems like everybody has talked about the downfall of Tom Herman on YouTube, while no one has talked about the path Sarkeesian took to become a head coach again at a big school. So let's talk about that. This is a new video I am trying out, so if you want to see more videos focused around college football head coaches, please leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and let me know who you want to see in future episodes. Steve Sarkeesian attended West High School in Torrance, California, where he was actually a standout baseball player. Sarkeesian stood at 6 feet tall and had no Division I offers to play football at the next level, so he chose to play baseball at USC as a non-scholarship middle infielder. Sarkeesian struggled and decided to transfer to El Camino College, a community college located on the outskirts of Los Angeles. El Camino College was a powerhouse in junior college football and was coached by John Featherstone. Featherstone had watched Sarkeesian play high school football and coached him in PE while at El Camino. Featherstone badgered Sarkeesian to come play for the football team. Sarkeesian, who thought he was done with football, finally relented and came out for football in the last week of spring practice. In two years, Sarkeesian left El Camino College as the most decorated passer in school history and signed with BYU as a scholarship player. Sark would continue to break records at BYU before going on to play in the Canadian Football League from 1997 to 1999. After that, Sark returned to the South Bay area where he was selling software. One day, he decided to casually stop by El Camino's practice and Featherstone talked him into coming to coach. Sarkeesian coached at El Camino College for the 2000 season where he was the quarterback coach and called plays from the booth. Sarkeesian would serve as the quarterback coach for USC from 2001 to 2003 and then held the same position in the NFL for the Oakland Raiders in 2004. Sarkeesian then returned to USC where he served as an assistant head coach and quarterback coach in 2005. In 2007, Sark interviewed for the vacant head coaching position for the Oakland Raiders but pulled his name out of the running and decided to stay at USC. Sarkeesian was then promoted to the offensive coordinator position to replace Lane Kiffin, who took the Raiders' head coaching position. Sark was then hired to be the head coach at Washington in 2008. Washington was coming off a winless 2008 season. During his first year, Sarkeesian led Washington to an upset win over his former team, number 3 USC, 16-13 with a last-second field goal. The Huskies then proceeded to lose 6 of their next 7 games, but beat Washington State 30-0 in the Apple Cup. Washington finished the season with a 5-7 record that year. When Pete Carroll left USC for the Seattle Seahawks, Sark was rumored as a potential replacement but was never offered by his former school. Sarkeesian also did not want to leave Washington after one season. Lane Kiffin was instead hired to replace Carroll at USC. In Sark's second season at Washington, the team improved to 6-6 six and, six and beat USC once again. They became bowl eligible for the first time since 2002 and beat Nebraska in the Holiday Bowl to achieve the program's first winning season in nine years. In 2011, Washington was sitting at 6-2 before going 1-3 in their last four games and lost to Baylor in the Alamo Bowl 67-56. Yes, you heard that right. In 2012, Washington once again finished 7-6 and, and lost to Mako Bowl. After three consecutive seven-win seasons, Sarkeesian earned the nickname Seven Win Steve. In 2013, Washington would go on to win eight games, finishing the regular season 8-4. Sarkeesian would not coach in the bowl game due to taking the head coaching job at USC. The NCAA sanctions that had been placed on USC were ending and Sarkeesian hoped to bring USC back to being national championship contenders. Although things seemed great on the outside, things were not going great in his private life. Desert News wrote in an article back in October, Unbeknownst to many outside of his immediate circle, Sarkeesian's private life was falling apart. His marriage of more than a decade and a half had begun to strain. It would end in a divorce in 2016. The pressures of the USC job, which layered administrative, fundraising, and public relations demands atop the already arduous work of teaching high-level football, took their toll. Sarkeesian had started to drink to the degree that it sometimes interfered with his work. His first season at USC in 2014 showed promise, with the Trojans winning 9 games and finishing the year ranked 20th nationally. But the good feelings wouldn't last. At a fundraiser event prior to the 2015 season, Sarkeesian stepped to the podium to address an assembly of boosters and supporters. He was visibly inebriated, losing his balance at times and slurring his words. He added an expletive to the school's rallying cry of fight on. Sarkeesian later apologized for his behavior and said his behavior was due to mixing alcohol and prescription medication. 
When asked whether he had a drinking problem, Sarkeesian said he didn't believe he did. After a 9-4 season in 2014, Sarkeesian started the 2015 season 3-2, and, and the USC dropped out of the top 25. USC decided to let Sarkeesian go. USC's athletic director Pat Hayden's comments on the firing didn't seem to be disappointed, but they were worried for Sark, saying, I feel a great deal of compassion for Steve Sarkeesian. Sarkeesian had lost his dream job where he had hoped to win multiple national championships. While many may have fallen into a deeper hole, Sarkeesian dropped out of the public eye and completed his rehab program and his former BYU teammates rallied around him. In 2016, Sarkeesian was hired by Nick Saban as an offensive analyst position that only paid $35,000 a year. That position allowed him to prove himself again and rediscover his love for football. When asked about Sarkeesian's approach at Alabama, one person said, It was never like, hey, I was a college quarterback, I had all this success, you should listen to me. There was none of that. It was humble confidence. Along with that, Sarkeesian was reunited with Lane Kiffin once again. Alabama would go 12-0 in 2016 and Sarkeesian replaced Kiffin as the offensive coordinator for the college football playoffs. When asked about it, Saban said, We are pleased to be able to hire an offensive coordinator with the pedigree and experience of Steve Sarkeesian. He has a tremendous offensive mind. Alabama would beat Washington in the semifinals, but lose to Clemson in the national championship. In 2017, Sarkeesian took the offensive coordinator job for the Atlanta Falcons, but was fired in 2018 and returned to Alabama as the offensive coordinator. In 2019, Alabama scored over 35 points in every game but missed the playoffs after Tua Tungavailoa went down with an injury. Sarkeesian was offered the head coaching job at Colorado but turned it down. While many thought Bryce Young should start for Alabama, Sark stayed with Mac Jones who finished third in the Heisman voting showing it was the right decision. When asked about his OC, Coach Sark does a really good job game planning each week and coming up with the best way to attack the defense, so big credits to him. When Nick Saban had to miss the Iron Bowl due to testing positive for COVID-19, Sarkeesian stepped in and led the Tide to a dominating win. Sarkeesian has since been hired as the head coach of the Texas Longhorns and will be coaching in the national championship tonight. For those who are worried about Sarkeesian's past, well, it seems like they are just that, in the past. If given the opportunity to do so, Sark may be able to do great things at Texas. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to let me know what other coaches you want to see in future episodes, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.